वेलकम बैक प्रॉब्लम फोर डैश ट्वेंटी फोर एंड दिस प्रॉब्लम इज टेकन फ्रॉम चैप्टर नंबर फोर दैट इज एक्जियल लोड एंड द बुक नेम इज मैकेनिक्स ऑफ मटीरियल बाय आर सी हिबलर सो स्टेटमेंट इज डिटरमाइन द रिलेटिव डिसप्लेसमेंट ऑफ वन एंड ऑफ द टेपर प्लेट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू अदर एंड वेन इट इज सब्जेक्टेड टू एक्जियल लोडिंग सो यू कैन सी दिस इज द टेपर प्लेन प्लेट clear and that is acted upon by axial loading so you have to determine the elongation of one end with respect to this end so you, what you have to find you have to find the displacement so let's start with the solution so first we will draw the front view of this tapered plate so if i draw it like this so it will be like this let me draw it first and then we will discuss you can see this diameter this width is d1 so we will write it as d1 and the upward is d2 so this distance is d2 total height is h so we will write it as h now if i draw a vertical line from this end perpendicular line and similarly this perpendicular line from this end so you can see that this distance will be same which is d1 and this remaining distance this distance and this distance will be equal to you can see that total is d2 so if you subtract d1 from d2 so you will get d2 minus d1 which will be this distance and this distance so if you divide it by 2 so this one distance will be d2 minus d1 divided by 2 so i will write d2 minus d1 divided by 2 and this distance will be also d2 minus d1 divided by 2 2 okay now you can see here width is d1 and here width is d2 so at each along this length which is let x so you can see that width is changing so we will find the function for width so this function w will be equal to you can see let this is the w let at this length this is w or a height of x x varies from this so here you can see that this w is equal to d1 plus i will write d1 d1 plus d2 minus d1 which will be this remaining distance this distance plus this distance so first write me it w is equal to d1 plus d2 minus d1 into x by l because x by h sorry okay so you can see that here at a distance of x we have this width is equal to d1 plus d2 minus d1 into x by h for whole h it is d2 and for x at a length of our height of x each it will be h by x so what we will do that if you put for x is equal to 0 it means that at this point you can see at this point so if you put this so this term will be equal to 0 and you can see w will be equal to d1 this is to check whether we have find out the correct weight function or not now for x is equal to for x is equal to h so when you put x is equal to h in this formula so this will be cut with this and this will be d1 will cut with this so w will be equal to d2 so w is equal to d2 and h is at this you can see here the d width is equal to d2 it means that this function is correct now we know that uh, elongation or deformation uh, for this tapered portion will be equal to p into x into length which is dx for smaller length dx into ax into e for length of or the length of 0 to h so h 0 is at this point and h is at this point so what we will do is that you have to put the value 
so integral of 0 to h p is given as p p into dx divided by a x into e so what we will do is that we will take out p and e constants so it will be taken out of the integral so we will left with 0 into 0 to h dx divided by ax now you can see that uh, this area of tapered portion at every section changes so it it will be equal to w into thickness which is t so i will write it p divided by e into integral of 0 to h dx divided by w and w is e w into t so what we will do is that we will put the value of w in that um, so you will get 0 to h dx divided by w is d1 plus d2 minus d1 divided by h into x multiplied by t okay so what we will do is that we will take t out of this integral so you will get p divided by e into t is 0 to h dx divided by d1 plus d2 minus d1 into x divided by h and if you further simplify it will be equal to p divided by e into t integral of 0 to h dx if you take the lcm so it will be h d1 into h plus d2 minus d1 into x okay so again take h out of the integral so you will get this deflection will be equal to p into h divided by e into t and we will left with integral of 0 to h dx divided by d1 into h plus d2 minus d1 into x now divide divide numerator and denominator numerator and denominator by d1 into h so what we will get is that deflection is equal to p into h divided by e into t and integral of 0 to h it will be equal to dx divided by d1 into h divided by d1 into h plus d2 minus d1 into x divided by d1 into h so we will get this p into h divided by e into t into d1 h and left with integral of 0 to h 1 or dx by 1 plus d2 minus d1 divided by d1 h into x now this integral we have to find out this integral so from mathematics we know that we have formula for like this uh, that if we have integral of dx divided by a into x plus b and integral start from 0 to h so it will be equal to 1 over a into ln of a divided by b into h plus 1 so this is the general formula now we will equate it with this so you can see that uh, here let this is b plus this d2 minus d1 over d1 h is equal to a so this formula will be equal to dx divided by ax plus b which is the same so what we will do is that we will get this deflection is equal to p into h divided by e t d1 into h and this whole term this term we will write it in term of this and that will be equal to 1 over a so a you can see a is equal to d2 minus d1 divided by d1 into h and b is equal to 1 so 1 over a so 1 over 
d2 minus d1 divided by d1 into h clear into ln of a by b so a is d2 minus d1 divided by d1 into h divided by b b is equal to 1 so we in multiply by with this h plus 1 okay so if you further simplify it you will get deflection is equal to p into h multiply by d1 into h divided by et d1 into h into d2 minus d1 into ln of this h will cut with this clear so we will left with uh, d2 minus d1 divided by d1 plus 1 okay so this d1h will cut with this so we will left with deflection will be equal to p into h divided by e into t into d2 minus d1 and into ln of this will be equal to d2 over d1 minus d1 over d1 plus 1 so if you further simplify it you will get this deflection will be equal to p into h divided by e into t d2 minus d1 into ln of this will be equal to d2 over d1 minus 1 plus 1 this minus 1 plus 1 will cancel each other so we will get ph divided by et into d2 minus d1 into ln of d2 minus d1 so at last we will get this deflection is equal to ph divided by e into t into d2 minus d1 into ln of d2 minus d2 over d1 and this is the value of deflection of one end with respect to another end now if you know the value of total height you have p you have the material you will get the modulus of elasticity you have thickness larger weight and smaller weight so you can just put in this value so you will get the total uh, total relative displacement of one end of taper plate with respect to another and that was all about this problem 4-24 i hope you have enjoyed this video and you have learned from it those who are new to my channel then subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you can get notification about my latest video if you have any question you can ask me in comment section thank you for watching welcome back in this video we are going to solve problem 4-25 that is taken from chapter number 4 axial load and the book name is mechanics of material by rc hibbler statement is determine the elongation of a36 steel member when it is subjected to axial force of 30 kN. the member is 10 millimeter thick use the result of problem 4-24 so you can see this is the a36 steel member that is acted upon by tensile load of 30 kilo newton and the thickness of this member is 10 millimeter this uh, width is 20 millimeter and this width is 75 millimeter so you have to find the elongation with the help of results of problem 4-24 so let's start with the solution so first we will write given data so we have been given that uh, this is a36 steel member steel member clear and that is subjected to axial load which is equal to p and that p is equal to 30 kilo newton thickness t is given as 10 millimeter and this 10 millimeter in meter is 0 0.01 meter now you can see this smaller width which is taken as d d1 d1 
and that d1 is equal to 20 millimeter in meter it is equal to 0 0.02 meter and this width which is the largest width that is taken as d2 and this d2 is equal to 75 millimeter and that is equal to 0 0.075 meter also you can see that this is the height of half of the portion and this height is taken as 0 0.5 meter so it is also given that use the result of problem 4-24 so we will take the results from that which we have solved in previous problem so what we have to find is we have to find determine the elongation determine the elongation so let's start its solution so if we move to the previous problem 4-24 which we have solved you i have uh, attach the link in this problem so this is the result so you have to copy this and this result which we will write it over here this def deformation which is delta is equal to p into h divided by e into t into d2 minus d1 into ln of d2 over d1 so first let me clear it you can see that this was the problem this is the smallest width d1 and this is, was the largest width d2 and that is acted upon by a tensile load and total height is h so for that deformation comes out to be this one so you are aware now you can see this is the half portion so if i add other half like this so this problem will be exactly the same like this one you can see this is half and this is half so total will be this one so for that our total elongation total elongation in this case will be equal to two times of delta so you can put the value 2 into ph divided by e that is steel member so we will write e steel into thickness d2 minus d1 into ln of d2 d2 over d1 so you have all the value you can see you have p you have t you have d1 d2 h you do not have e and e for steel member so e for steel can be obtained from the book and we will move toward the book is if you go at the end of the book to the properties table below so you can see the second last one is average mechanical property so if you click at that and you can see that this is a 36 steel so its e is 200 gigapascal so note down this value is equal to 200 gigapascal so 200 and that will be equal to 200 into 10 raised to power 9 pascal now you have all the values you can just put it so you will get elongation our total elongation will be equal to 2 multiplied by p is 30 kilonewton so 30 into 10 raised to power 3 h is 0 0.5 meter all the values is given over here you have to just put the value E of steel is 200 into 10 to power 9 thickness is 0 0.01 and d2 is 0 0.075 minus d1 is 0 0.02 into log of 0 0.075 divided by 0 0.02 so when you solve this you will get this elongation total elongation I will write total as well so total elongation will be equal to 0 0.360 into 10 to the power minus 3 or that will be equal to 0 0.360 millimeter so that will be total elongation and this is the answer of our 
this question number 4-25 and that was all about this problem i hope you have enjoyed this video and you have learned from it those who are new to my channel then subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you can get notification about my latest videos if you have any question you can ask me in comment section thank you for watching Welcome back. Problem 4-23. This problem is taken from chapter number 4 that is axial load and the book name is Mechanics of Material by R.C. Hibbler. So statement of the problem is the rod has a slight taper and length L. It is suspended from a ceiling and support a load P at its end. Show that the displacement of its end due to this load is this one. Neglect the weight of the material, the modulus of elasticity is E. So you can see this is taper rod and that is attached with the ceiling. The, outer, the largest radius is R2 while the smallest radius is R1. The total length is L and that is subjected to axial load of P. So you have to find the elongation in this rod which is delta and that delta is equal to P into L divided by pi E R2 and R1. So let's start with the solution. So first step is that if you if you draw the half of the section and take the frontal view, so it will be like this one. You can see this will be the portion. This will be the, it will be look like this. So you can see this half, this, this, this is the, half portion which i have shown you shaded so this is uh, r2 from this point till this point this is r2 clear this is r1 the total length is given as l so this length is l and you can see if you draw a vertical line from this end so this distance will be same which is r1 and this distance will be this distance remaining distance will be equal to r2 minus r1 okay now you can see that uh, um, the radius is changing throughout its length clear so here radius is R1 and here radius is R2. So what we will do is that we will take any distance x and we will find the radius, function of radius at that length of x. So let from this till this distance there we take this as x. So here this distance which will be equal to R of x and we will find this R of x by using this formula r of x will be equal to you can see this r of x is equal to this r1 and this distance so i will write r1 plus this distance this distance will be equal to r2 minus r1 multiply by x over l because it is acting at x distance of total length l so i will write r2 minus r1 divide by l multiply by 
x now you can for check you can put for x is equal to 0 so when you put x is equal to 0 this term will be equal to 0 and rx will be equal to r1 so here you can see rx will be equal to r1 so i will write rx is equal to r1 now for x is equal to length l if you put this x l and when you calculate it you will get rx will be equal to r2 it means that our function of r x is correct so r radius depend upon it the length over a length of any distance x from this you can find the radius okay now if you further simplify this rx so rx is equal to if you take lcm so it will be equal to r1 into l plus r2 minus r1 into x divided by l now we know that due to this axial load p we have deformation is equal to integral of p into x into dx divided by ax into modulus of elasticity e and that integral from 0 to over entire length l so you can just put here so we will get 0 to l p into dx divided by ax into e now area for area we know that area a of x is equal to pi r square into x so you can just put the value of r so pi into r is r1 l plus r2 minus r1 into x divided by l whole square so if you further simplify it you will get a of x will be equal to pi over l square and we will left with r1 into l plus r2 minus r1 into x whole square so put the value of a over here so you will get deflection is equal to integral of 0 to l p into dx divided by pi over l square into r1 l plus r2 minus r1 into x whole square oh okay now if you take p p if you take this p pi and l square out of so it will be equal to p l square over pi and there is also e multiply by e so you will take these terms out of this integral so you will left with dx by r1 into l minus x2 my uh, sorry r2 minus r1 into x whole square okay now we will solve this uh, integral and this integral from 0 to l so from uh, our mathematics portion and integral so if you have the formula like this dx divided by ax plus b whole square so its solution will be equal to minus 1 divided by a into ax plus b so what we will do is that if you further simplify this equation so we will get delta is equal to p l square over pi into e integral of 0 to l dx and we will get here r1 into l plus minus r2 plus r1 into x whole square now you can see that this portion is a and this is b so you will get a x plus b whole square which is the same formula like this so this deflection delta will be equal to p l square over pi into e 
and we will get minus 1 by here you can see a is equal to my r1 minus r2 and b is equal to r1 into l so minus 1 over a a is equal to r1 minus r2 into a x plus b which is r1 minus r2 into x plus b b is r1 into l into l and we will take limit from 0 to l x star from 0 to l now if you further simplify this equation so you will get deflection is equal to minus p l square over pi into e and you will get r1 minus r2 out of this square bracket so you will left with 1 by r1 minus r2 into x plus r1 into l and their limit will be 0 to x from 0 to l okay further simplifying this delta is equal to minus p l square over pi into e into r1 minus r2 into 1 over if you replace x with l so it will be 1 over r1 minus r2 into l plus r1 into l and then minus 1 over x is replaced by 0 so r1 minus r2 into 0 plus r1 into l okay so this delta will be equal to minus p l square over pi into e into r1 minus r2 into this will be 1 over r1 minus r2 times l plus r1 into l and this will be equal to 1 over r1 into l now if you further simplify it this delta will be equal to minus p l square over pi e into r1 minus r2 into 1 over r1 into l minus 1 over r2 into l plus 1 over r1 into l and this will be minus 1 over r1 into l so this will cancel so we will left with delta will be equal to minus p l square over pi e into r1 minus r2 and we have 1 over r1 into l minus 1 over r2 into l and that will be equal to minus p l square over pi e into r1 minus r2 so if you take the lcm of these two terms so that will be equal to r1 r2 into l and if you take this value and divide by r1 by l so you will get r2 and similarly for this we will get r1 now you will get delta is equal to minus p l square over pi into e into r1 minus r2 and here you will get if you want to convert this r2 minus r1 so that will be equal to minus take minus as common so it will be equal to r1 minus r2 divide by r1 into r2 into l okay so further this delta will be equal to this minus multiply by minus will be plus this and this r1 will be cut with this so you will left and this 1l will cut with this l so you will left with p into l we will left with p into l divide by pi e into r1 multiply by r2 so this is the deflection of one end of the tapered rod due to axial load and we have proved that this is equal to pl divided by pi e into r1 and r2 
you can check it this is the same and that was all about this problem 4-23 i hope you have enjoyed this video and you have learned from it those who are new to my channel then subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you can get notification about my latest videos if you have any question you can ask me in comment section thank you for watching Welcome back. Problem 4-26. This problem is taken from chapter number 4, Axial Load and the book name is Mechanics of Material by R.C. Hibbler. So statement is determine the elongation of tapered A992 steel shaft when it is subjected to an axial force of 80, 18 kips. Hint is use the result of problem 4-23. So you can see this is the shaft that is tapered clear over a length of 4 inch and then 20 inch that is uniform diameter and then at, at the end there is a tapered portion that is acted upon by axial load of 18 kips at this point R1 is 0 0.5 and this R2 which is given as 2 inch okay so we have to find the total elongation due to this load so first we will write given data so it is given that this is tapered A992 steel clear the load axial load P is given as 18 kips clear for tapered portion tapered portion we have R1 is equal to 0 0.5 inch and R2 is 2 inch. The tapered length L1 is taken as 4 inch and for uniform rod for uniform rod portion its length is equal to L2 and that is taken as 20 inch and diameter is equal to 1 inch our radius is equal to 0 0.5 inch okay so what we have to find is we have to find determine elongation and that elongation is not known hint is given as use result of problem 4-23 so let's start with the solution now you can see you have one this tapered portion and one this and one is uniform rod and there is a tensile load so from problem 4-23 which we have solved previously you can see this is the solution I will attach the link as well so from here this is the tapered portion that is acted upon by a tensile load or axial load so deformation in this tapered portion is given by this formula pl divided by pi into e r1 into r2 so this is for tapered portion only so we will just write this formula over here here so this elongation delta is equal to P into L divided by pi into E into R2 into R1 that is for tapered portion since we can see that we have two tapered portion and one is this uniform diameter so total elongation or elongation in this rod will be equal to elongation in this portion plus elongation in this portion plus elongation in this portion so for tapered part it will be p into l1 divided by pi e into r2 into r1 plus another tapered portion p into l1 divided by pi into e r2 into r1 plus elongation in this uniform rod which is given by formula p into l2 divided by a into e so from here you can see you have two times 
p into l1 divided by pi into e r2 into r1 plus p l2 divided by a into e okay so a can be obtained you know that area of circular rod is pi r square clear so you can put the value pi multiply by r is 0 0.5 clear r is not 0 0.5 r is actually 2 2 this is this diameter also correct it this diameter is 4 and this r is 2 because you can see this is the diameter radius so diameter is uh, diameter is 4 so pi r square so I will write pi into r is 2 so it will be pi into 2 square now you can put it in the formula so you will get uh, this elongation total elongation will be equal to 2 multiply by p is given as 18 ksi so 18 we will not change ksi into 10 to the power 3 we will left it into length l which is tapered length l1 is you can see 4 inch divide by pi e is not known so from property table you will go to the book and you will go to the property table let me show you at the end of book you will go to the property table so you can see that this is the property table and that is in SI so we will move toward US customary and here you can see a992 having value 29 into 10 to the power 3 KSI so you will write it e value is 29 into 10 to the power 3 KSI KSI is also above it with 18 and multiply by r2 r2 is 0. Point, r2 is 2 into r1 is 0. 0.5 plus p which is 18 into length of uniform rod which is 20 it's 20 divided by area which is pi into 2 square into e and that e is 29 into 10 to the power 3 ksi so when you solve this you will get this elongation will comes out to be 0 0.00257 inch and that is the answer of this question so due to this tensile loading uh, a total elongation in this tapered a992 steel comes out to be 0.00257 and that was all about this problem 4-26 i hope you have enjoyed this video those who are new to my channel then subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you can get notification about my latest videos if you have any question you can ask me in comment section thank you for watching